Welcome everybody back to Friar Talk. Today we're going to be talking about Shohei Otani and basically his his free agency coming up and basically where he might go. Some rumors about how much money he's going to make, the type of contract that he's going to be expected to sign. Um, there's a couple different kind of variations that people think he might go after. Potentially a short-term deal uh, with, I mean, more likely a long-term deal with short-term opt-outs compared to just like a massive long-term deal. So there's a lot of stuff kind of looking into to see what he would want to do. And then kind of seems like he maybe might play some teams in for agency. But ESPN dropped an article recently. So I'm going to pull it up here real quickly. And basically, this is the deal that's expected from ESPN. Now, it's an 11-year deal, $524 million, a $47.5 million contract. Ridiculous, right? Um, now, you read down a little bit farther on this. The dilemma that he kind of faces, which is an amazing dilemma for Shohei Otani, is that he may be getting a contract that's 60 mil AAV if he decides to do a short-term contract or if he decides to front-load a deal with opt-outs, where basically you know, he could get like a three-year $180 million deal and it's protected where it might be like a 500 total, but he can opt out after three years and then end up making way more than $500 million in that time span. So that's kind of the money that's expected from him. So Isaac, you're kind of looking at this. You know, the Padres are a potential suitor. The Dodgers are a potential suitor. Those are the big one. The Mets are another one. Um, we're going to get into all the teams that are kind of looking at him because there's there's a few other teams that maybe people didn't really expect to be in the running. Um, but if you're a team looking looking into the running for Shohei Otani, is this something that's like absurdly expensive or do you think it's definitely worth it? It's To me, it's definitely worth it. At least for a few, few years, it'll definitely be worth it because I think uh, it's kind of starting to get talked about more, but there's not a lot being talked about when it comes to, well, if you do sign an 11-year deal with Shohei Otani, what if he's not pitching after five years? What if he's not pitching after seven years? Um, that's something that's definitely going to need to be discussed amongst every organization. That's a big risk. However, for those five years that he is going to be both pitching and hitting at the level that he currently is right now and possibly longer than five years, you're getting, to me, you're getting a great value. You're getting someone that's $30 million at the plate. You're getting someone that's $30 million on the mound. And I think those numbers are justified. And not only that, but if you don't think those numbers are justified, they become justified when you realize that you're getting a guy that can do two things that's only taking up one roster spot. So when you look at that deal and you see, oh, 11, 11 years at, what was it, $47.5 million AAV, that's, dude, that's too low to me. That's that's just my opinion. I think that is to the AAV is too low. The years is a lot, and when it comes to that sixty million versus six hundred million, Matt's right. Yeah, it's going to be either like a five year, three hundred million dollar deal, or it's going to be like a twelve year, six hundred million dollar deal just to lower the AAV. Um, I don't know which one would be smarter. I think personally. For an organ from an organizational standpoint, the shorter term deal with the more AAV smarter. That way, you avoid the risk of him not pitching um, down the road. However, from Shohei's standpoint, if you want to be locked in for to a team for a really long time, and maybe he doesn't, maybe he wants to opt out. Maybe he gets that 11, 11 year deal with an opt out. Um, but it's a lot. It's a lot to digest when it comes to Shohei Otani because you've never seen a player like this. We've never had a player like this hit the market, and obviously we're a Padres channel. So when it comes to the Padres, you do this at the risk of knowing you're not going to have Juan Soto, and it it almost becomes a guarantee you're not going to have Juan Soto past 2024. Um, now, no, I know there will be some Padres fans that will probably say never underestimate Peter Seidler and AJ Preller. Um, but you look at it from a financial standpoint, it almost becomes impossible to keep both. However, if you get Shohei Otani and you know you sign him to however much they, they're willing to, I'd assume the Padres are going to be one of those teams that want him for um, five, six years, 60 million AAV. For one year at the top of your lineup, you have Fernando Tatis, Juan Soto, Manny Machado, Shohei Otani, and Xander Bogarts, and Jake Cronenworth hitting sixth. For one year, you get all those guys in your lineup. That is the best lineup in all of baseball and could be one of the best in baseball history. But that, of course, is at the risk of losing Juan Soto. However, you still get to keep Shohei Otani for the foreseeable future. We'll talk about the Padres more um, you know, later in the video uh, when we talk about the other teams too. But 
Um, from an organizational standpoint, man, if you're getting him for 47 and a half million AAV, you're getting a steal. Dude, 100%. Because 47 and a half million, like you said, he's one, he's saving you a roster spot because you can just add an extra guy because you're having a starter and your primary DH almost every single day for, you know, for 80% of the time, your DH. So he's doing that. He's also a high end starter and he's one of the best bats in the league. So you're getting so much out of a player that it seems. So what, what I think is going to happen with his contract, I think that he's ultimately going to sign some, some massive deal where it's like, 12 what was their expectation like i think i think it was 11 years the total number was let me see 11 years 524 million dollar contract roughly so an 11 10 let's say 10 years 500 mil plus 550 right something like that i, I think he's going to sign something like that but there's going to be an opt out a couple years in and that's ultimately like the real contract you know like where it's like it's insurance for him if he can't pitch that he can still make a lot of money if he was to get hurt in the first couple years, let's say like three years, that, that would kind of be my guess three years. Right. But he's also going to be front loaded and making a ton of money in that time span. So he'll probably opt out and then try to get another deal. Almost like what NBA players do because NBA players do that with their contracts all the time where it's like this guy signed a record breaking deal. And then two years later he opts out and then he signs the next record breaking deal. And he's now the highest paid player in the league again. So Otani could easily just do that for like, a long time because he's that good. And until he can't pitch and hit at the same time and do what he's able to do, he's always going to, he should always be the highest paid player. And he could just keep doing that every couple years and he could keep doing it and keep coming back to the same team too. But I think that's what his contract's going to look like. So if I'm a team though, I mean, if I could get a deal where it's more short term oriented, like let's say there's not like an opt out, it's just like, yeah, we'll sign you for four or five years for 50 to $60 million a year. Yeah, I'm doing that easy. That's that is an easy thing to do if you're a team is to sign him for 50, 60 million over a four or five year period. So I, I think he's gonna ultimately do something like that. Um, however, if we keep looking down this article, uh, they also talk about basically, you know, where are the potential suitors? Who are the potential suitors in this one? And this is where I think it gets really interesting because we're talking about all this money, right? We're talking about oh, 60 million a year or whatever it is. Well, you look at the teams and they're they're the normal teams. You got Padres, right here. Padres, Mets, Yankees, Dodgers. Those are the four, right? Um, a return to the Angels, of course, that could be. A, I don't know. I don't think that's happening, but th that's potentially on the on the horizon. And then we have Mariners, Giants, Rangers, Cubs. So this is kind of the second tier of like, okay, are these guys really going to be in the mix? Because the Giants were initially in the mix, and the Mariners could be. They're they're West Coast. It seems like he's more interested in joining a West Coast team. So they definitely could. In all honesty, I, I don't know why the Rangers and the Cubs are on this list. And like Rangers-Cubs fans, not not trying to, to crap on you guys. I, I just don't really know. Like it just doesn't seem like it from all the reports. It's like New York or West Coast. That's like only been the report. So maybe they're just kind of have become in, have came into the mix. Um we do know that a couple of Japanese players have recently signed to the Cubs. So you got Seiya Suzuki there. Um, so, I mean, I don't know. Maybe that's why you had Yudarvish there. Yudarvish spoke really highly of the Cubs organization. And that was that was apparently why Seiya Suzuki ultimately ended up signing with the Cubs. So maybe it's something like that where he's kind of put them on the list. Ultimately, I don't really think those teams are that serious. And then if we go a little bit farther down the article, this is basically the quote that kind of got big. I think he uses the Potters and Mets to run up the price, but he wants to and will go with Dodgers. So ESPN thinks he's going to the Dodgers. That's their thought process there. Um, but there are a bunch of other teams in the mix. So, I mean, this is this is quite a few teams here that are, are being discussed. So, Isaac, what do you think about this? Do you think you think this is like, you think this is pretty accurate? You think this, these are the teams that you think are going to be running in it at, at the end of it? Yes, it's no surprise that it's all of the big markets and the big spender San Diego Padres that are being mentioned when it comes to Shohei Otani. Not to mention both the Dodgers and the Padres were interested in Otani when he was coming into the league. So no surprise that they're going to be interested again. Like you mentioned, I don't think a, I don't think a return to the Angels is necessarily um, – I don't want to say it's completely out of the realm. Yeah, I think it fully depends on how they do the rest of this season. But they're having a solid start to the season, pretty similar to the Padres, if not a little better. 
However, everyone expects the Padres to definitely do more, and no one expects the Angels to do much more than this. Um, so I, I don't see the Angels holding on to Shohei Otani. And, I mean, personally, I don't think Shohei sees a future with the Angels, whether it be because he doesn't want to be there or he thinks that they can't win. But you look at that roster, I don't think the Angels have built something that's going to be able to win not only now but in the foreseeable future. Signing Tyler Anderson, it didn't end up working out for them. He's trash right now. Um, they don't have the pitching st- – I mean, their pitching staff is nothing without Shohei Otani. Most of their games – um, are one with Shohei Otani on the mound. But with that being said, you look at the rest of the teams, the New York Mets. Of course the New York Mets are going to be in there. Look at how much they spend. They were almost willing to drop another bag on a, on another fat contract for Carlos Correa. The physicals didn't didn't um, you know go through or they didn't pan out, but why wouldn't they be willing to drop a fat contract or drop a bag for Shohei Otani? They were willing to do it for another star player, so they'll do it for this star player too. To kind of complete their team um no i don't see him going to the mets um then you look at the padres I mentioned the padres earlier if the padres want to do this they're doing it sac- knowing that they're gonna have to probably sacrifice juan soto for the foreseeable future but for that one year your rotation is headlined by shohei otani you darvish and joe musgrove and maybe you can get another pitcher um and your lineup is headlined by nothing but superstars. Fernando Tatis Jr., Juan Soto, Manny Machado, Xander Bogarts, Shohei Otani, Jake Cronenworth, um, Trent Grisham's having a good year. You have a lineup full of studs for that one year. That is the all-in year. And it's not like the Padres will end up being bad in the future. They have prospects, and I know the farm's not that deep, but it's top-heavy. Jackson Merrill's a great prospect. Ethan Salas is a great prospect. Um, DeVries is supposed to be coming over here. One of the best prospects since Wander Franco, the best prospects since Wander Franco internationally. The Padres are built for future success as well. This is a good situation for Shohei to come to. However, another unfortunately good situation for Shohei to go to is the Los Angeles Dodgers. Um, you look at it and you know the Dodgers have been loading up for this for a solid year or two now. They've been loading up for this, preparing for this. Um and it's super smart. I mean, it's really scary thinking the Dodgers are in first right now and the Padres are supposed to be at their best, supposed to be the best Padres team maybe ever. And the Dodgers are still ahead of them. If the Padres can't win the division this year, if they can't win the World Series this year, and the Dodgers get Shohei Otani, that will be backbreaking for the Padres. Um, but with that being said, that's a really good situation for him to go to. If you look at it, From a rotation standpoint, Shohei Otani, maybe Clayton Kershaw because they keep bringing him back every year. Dustin May, Tony Gonsolin, maybe Walker Buehler down the road. Just a bunch of stud arms. One of the top farm systems in baseball. He could take over the DH spot. They'll be able to develop more guys in the lineup. James Outman looks good. Like That's a good lineup. That's a good rotation. The bullpen is the only weakness right now, but we know they'll probably upgrade the bullpen. They, they, They have been... They purposely... Spent low this year, didn't spend, it's not low, it's still top five, top ten in all of baseball. However, they purposely didn't go past a certain luxury tax tax threshold so they can do it again next year. So they can go past that threshold again next year. They just didn't want to be offenders again because it was going to cost a lot. So they had a sort of a reload year, which is supposed to be this year, but they're still in first. And they're willing to do it. They're willing to go back to that their their old spending habits next year. And this guy that we're mentioned that we're talking about is at the forefront of their discussions in the front office. I would assume. Um, but you know, looking at the other teams, you got the Cubs. I don't really see the Cubs. Unfortunately, the Cubs. Maybe they can be good soon, but I don't think they'll be good in the next two or three years. I think they'll be competitive, um, but I don't think that's a team that Shohei's willing to go to. I don't think they'll win a World Series. The Mariners, that's a, I think that's a great team to go to. I think the AL isn't very deep right now. Um, he will be staying in the same division, but I think the Mariners are kind of that Shohei Otani type player away from maybe competing with the Astros. Um, and Julio Rodriguez is having a really, really rough start to the season. Hopefully he can pick it up, but that could be a team headlined by Luis Castillo, Shohei Otani, Julio Rodriguez, just a bunch of stars. And um, 
That could be a good situation for him. San Francisco Giants wouldn't be surprising. They're willing. I mean, the Giants have, have looked like a team that wants a superstar. They tried for Correa. I forgot who they tried for the year. Oh, they tried for Judge. I forgot who they tried for the year before. But they want a superstar. And they're going to want this superstar too. It's also on the West Coast. Um, they're willing to drop a lot of money just like us, just like the Dodgers. That's going to be maybe the slept on team that nobody talks about that. We could be looking and saying they're a real threat to get him. Um, but I mean, no surprise that it's these teams, man, the teams that are in the Rangers, no way. I don't see it. Um, but no surprise that these teams, man, it's, it's super fun. Just thinking of, of all these different scenarios. Yeah. Cause I mean, anywhere he goes, it's going to be, such a massive sign. Shoy Otani is probably the most coveted free agent in the history of baseball. Like, think about that. That that is something that you do not really like come across very often. So, also, I mean, you bring up the Giants. I feel bad for the Giants, honestly, dude. Like, the Giants are trying to be like a bigger market team. They get Arson Judge for like what, like an hour, and then it doesn't work out. Obviously, like they go after Correa. Like, they just could not land a guy. And I feel like Otani is going to be the same situation. Like Otani Part Two, because I want to say the Giants were like even ahead on the list in the Padres. Like I want to say initially it was like he signed with the angels and like, it was like the giants and the Dodgers were the next team. And then there was like other teams that were interested, like the Padres, the Mariners. And like, I think the Yankees, something like that, but the giants were way up on his list. And and I think he's, they're going to be like true finalists, but it feels like they just strike out every time. Um, so ultimately prediction wise, I'll tell you guys, I think it's going to be something Similar to like a, a short term or a long term, a massive long term deal front loaded with an opt out after three or four years. That's my expectation. If I had to pick a team, I would go with the Dodgers. I mean, they've been the most linked to him. They've been the expected team that he's supposed to go to. So I would go with go with the Dodgers. And I think you said it's backbreaking, like one hundred percent. That that is completely accurate. Like that is a rough rough signing if that ends up going down. So that's what I'm thinking. Uh, but. Who, who, who do you think? What, what do you think on a deal? What, do, what is kind of your Shohei Otani prediction? Yeah, I mean, you mentioned it, early it, prediction at that. Yeah, it's just, uh, yeah, definitely. But, you know, when it comes to, to a deal like this, it's tough to gauge because is there, like I said, there's a lot of risk to signing him to a long term deal. You might not get the $60 million Shohei Otani for that whole deal. You could realistically be paying $60 million for a DH after a few years. You could be paying $60 million for a pitcher, which is much less likely. The much more likely thing is maybe, I mean, you could be paying $60 million for a closer slash DH. Yeah, sounds weird. Closer. John Schmoltz closed at the end of his career. We could see that type of thing. Like, there's so many different possibilities. And I think a team would be smart to go for those six years and sign them to 360 or five for 300. That sounds a lot better to me. But when you look at it from a player standpoint, you're going for the player, man. The player needs to be satisfied with the contract, not the team. So if the player's thinking, look, I want a long-term contract. I want to be financially secure for 10, 12 years. You got to you got to pay up because if you don't pay up, some other team is going to. So if I had to predict, I'd go 12 for 600. I think uh, the Padres did, you know, 11 for two something with Xander Bogarts. He was going to get that 200 million, 235, whatever it was, no matter what. But the Padres wanted to lower the AAV. So that way, or the Padres gave him more years to lower the AAV. I think it'll be the same for Shohei. Someone's going to give him more years, lower the AAV. Um, super smart also. Uh, like I said, there's a lot more risk to that. Um, but you're also paying less for that risk. Uh you know, you mentioned that the most likely team is the Dodgers, and I couldn't agree more. Yeah, the most likely team is the Dodgers. Um, never going to count out my Padres when it comes to to signing this type of deal. AJ Preller loves Shohei Otani. The Padres as a team love Shohei Otani. All of the players speak glowingly. Fernando called him the best player in baseball. All of them speak glowingly of Shohei Otani. So um, definitely not going to rule out the Padres. I personally think Dodgers Potters are the two uh, front runners when it comes to Shohei Otani. And maybe it's a little biased, but I just don't really see the other teams competing for a guy like this. And I mean, the Giants, yeah, it makes a lot of sense, but are the Giants going to be good anytime soon? Is Shohei Otani really willing to bet that they're going to be good anytime soon? 
Um, cause right now they don't have the roster that shows. And, um, you know, when it, when it comes to him signing with the Dodgers, yeah, for us Padre fans, that's a, that's a backbreaker. I mean, that sucks because not only are you missing out on Shohei Otani, but the next free agent market is not that good. So it's not like you can just pivot and go get another superstar. Maybe it'll be too late to get another superstar, but also what superstars are on the market. This is the one, like, this is the, the diamond not even, I mean, yeah, diamond in the rough, I guess you could say. Um, but, yeah, that would suck. That would suck for us if you were to sign with the Dodgers because there's not other good options. There's no one else worth dropping a lot of money for, at least right now that I can think of. However, this could also be a discussion that we're having at the trade deadline when we're saying who can trade for Shohei Otani. Who's willing to give up a lot for three months, only, maybe potentially only three months of Shohei Otani. Um but it's, it's, it's going to be, I mean, Otani Watch started last year, but it's definitely starting to get a lot more fun. Yeah, absolutely. So a- anyone listening, comment where you think he's going to land. What do you think his deal is going to look like? Um, maybe we're sleeping on some of these teams. I mean, Isaac, you just said straight up like Rangers. No, that's not happening. You you didn't even you didn't even get in that one. And, and, and I'm there with you. I agree. I think that's that's the right take. But maybe Ranger fans are like, dude, like, no, there's a chance. This is why. And also keep in mind, like, Everyone has their own teams getting linked to him. So it's like everyone's kind of like, no, we have more of a chance than we think. I think ultimately the the three biggest locations, you said it would come down to Padres, Dodgers. I would put the Yankees and the Mets in there as well with the Yankees being higher. I, I think they're legitimately in there. And I think that the Giants are going to be a finalist, but like not really. Like they've been like the last couple of years, which... Like I said, it sucks for them because that's like so frustrating. We're about to get this guy. Oh, no, you're not. Like, so I don't know. That's what I kind of think it's going to end up looking like. But it's early. I mean, we're in May. We're talking about Otani. But I mean, there's not like we said, like this is probably the best free agent ever in baseball, which is wild. So I think it's going to do it. But uh, thank you all for listening, and we'll be back soon. I know a lot of, probably probably got some Dodger fans, probably got some Mets, Yankees fans and stuff listening to this. So Padres stuff, going to be returning later this evening. We'll be going live after this Twin Series, so make sure to tune in for that. Uh, probably about 5.30 on that one. So that's going to do it. But thank you all for listening, and we'll talk very, very soon.